Hi. I don't, I don't even know what that word was then. I can, I it can was. Say, it was Bell End shouting <laughs> about 150 decibels. It actually sorry, distorted sorry, my everybody. headphones. Um, <laughs> yes, well, I did. Uh, I did ask you to. We were setting up before, so anyway, um, welcome to Resident Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are talking about why we play games tonight. Yeah. We haven't done any research this week. I believe we just kind of. I mean, well, there I is anything start. of research, I, is there? I consider the last the last thirty odd years as the research for this topic, really. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, it, again, it, or, or, as you might be able to tell, uh, regular viewers, um, Sam is not here tonight. Sam is again; he is preoccupied with real life, unfortunately. And uh, so, yeah, you've got us three. Um, no, no real structure, so we kind of we kind of just gonna put it out there. Steve. Yep. Let you start. That's not you. That's not Steve, Lou. Lou. Yeah, not I'm, Steve. I'm Steve. <laughs> <laughs> or you can go first if you got a burning. Uh, no, I haven't. Look, he looked. He looked like he was. He looked as enthusiastic as he did when he got his Oculus Rift the other day. Nothing to talk about that. So, yeah. Well, seeing as though, seeing as though, not everybody watches all of the shows. Who does watch? Give us a give us a quick look. There you go. There's your there's your geek fantastic malarkey. Don't even know what that sentence means, but yeah, he's happy now. He's got his Oculus Rift, and that's I all am. we want. Fucking I'm very happy. Yeah, he hasn't I'm had also... a chance to use it properly yet. No, no I've, I've had a few furtive uh, moments in it, and running around and feeling a bit dizzy and a bit sick, and then having to lay down for a few hours. Really? Yeah. You've actually, you've actually, you didn't tell us that. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh well. Yes. <laughs> it, um, I've, I've had similar sickness all the times I've used it to varying degrees, but I'm, I'm getting my VR legs, as they call it. Yes. Yeah. Have you got up and started walking around the room yet? No, like, it's a sit, it, it is a sit-down product. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but accidentally, like, have you oh, well, got? Been, you, have you been so absorbed? Have you, have well, you yeah, like, I mean, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things you can do is obviously you can move your head around. Um, and my wall is right here, as you can see. So there's been times that I've been looking around corners and just went poof into the wall. Yeah, I was thinking that. Um, I, I imagine that would be the case, but. So I, I might need to move everything away from the wall, possibly. Yeah, I think I'd struggle, I'll be honest, because I or mean... Or you could wrap a cushion uh, like cushion around your head or something. <laughs> around your whole body. Actually, you could put your bike helmet on and just have the rift sticking out with the visor. Well, then you've got headphones to contend with and... Yeah, you can get little ones that go up inside. I think wear them over the top, that's the whole point of it. It's got a strap rather than a... Well, anyway, yeah. No, yeah. We'll, we'll both have a go of it soon, I, I have no doubt. And it'll be yes. my first go of an Oculus Rift. I haven't actually tried one yet. As, as I said a while back, I... Uh, I saw two, I think there was, well, there was more than two, but there was two queues for two different companies at a, a, a convention I went to, and I just couldn't be bothered. I wasn't, I, I was, yeah. I was like, unless I can sit and play with it myself in my own time, probably not going to try it, you know? Mm. But well, I will be uh, going around Lou's tomorrow night to uh, to try it out for myself. Not fair. I need to, I need to live fair. closer to you guys. Or find a faster, it's not more that far. spot. Well, as as we're talking about the rift, then, and we're and we're talking tonight about um about why we play games, should I start? Because I think it kind of I can kind of tie the two together. Yeah. A little bit. Um, so I think we. Steve was talking just before the show started about how games are a a, a medium, like an artistic medium. They're not normally considered an artistic medium, but especially in in recent years, there have been certain titles that come out which have crossed the the kind of lines and become a kind of a, an artistic experience. Right. Um. And the the key word there is experience. Now, I play games for probably the same reason that I like to read books, like especially fantasy and sci-fi books. Um, the same reason I like. Um, that those genres of uh, movies and TV, I like the um, the escapism mm. and the, the the being in a different place. Um, that's a big thing for me. The the it's not necessarily being in a different to being uh, being in a different place. I think we mentioned a few uh, to me anyway. There's obviously personally, <laughs> obviously it's different for everybody. Um, a couple of um, a couple of shows ago, we mentioned uh, that. Do you do you play these games to feel like an assassin, to feel like a pirate, to feel like a, a soldier? You know, all, all the stuff, all the different things, the roles that you play. And I think my answer is a resounding no. There, I don't play them to become the characters and completely escape. I play them because 
I enjoy the challenges, I think, yeah. more than anything. I think, yeah, I think there's, there's a distinction, isn't there? There's some people who like to play a game because they want to inhabit the character, and they, they almost they play differently depending on what game they're playing. But I am always me in the game, and it's like it, it, the game allows me to do things that I can't do in real life, and that's the escapism part of it. But, but it's the fact that they're enabling me to do more, there is but still, it's still, still Yeah, there are still people that actually prefer that role-playing element, though. And they don't have to be playing role-playing games to get that from games, which is the beautiful thing, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's weird that you mention role-play, because um, when I played EverQuest, I used to actually role-play. I was a dwarf, and I talked... I, like, I, I wrote in a dwarven accent. It was basically a Scottish accent. I tried that with my... Um, with my <laughs> uh, what, 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 what were they called in... In the barbarians? Quest. Was it barbarians or you Nords? Probably also. Oh, no, they were barbarians. See, probably you said also this before. Scottish. I'm not. I'm not convinced. I think they are barbarians. Be... Yeah. Luce spent about nine years playing that game. Yeah, he did. I suppose. I, so did I. I spent a good while <laughs> playing it. I think I quit before Lou did, though. So, the, but that's as far as I've gone with the role play thing. And I did that because the game. It's there wasn't much cop to the game. It was a really nice world. There lots of people in it, and I think the joy of the game of that game was was the ability to role play but that's not what I normally do when I'm playing games uh, I'm I'm the same way I, I, I'm always me when I play a game regardless of what game it is or well I assume myself to what, do you assume that when you both said this now? But do you assume yourself in the game, or do you assume yourself as yourself playing the game? How how disconnected are you when you immerse yourself in it? When I'm immersed, I'm. That's a hard one. It is hard to explain. Um, the decisions that you make through the game are the decisions that I would make through the game. Yeah. So maybe it's using the game as an extension instead of actually imagining myself as that character. But then again, here we come with the, the immersion of VR and everything. Then that yeah. that gives you yeah. more immersion in the game. Immersion of I think immersion, were, yeah. yeah. Um, that, that gives you more immersion in the game, you know. And then we were talking <laughs> about smells and haptic feedback and all the other stuff. But do I, I what I think what I'm trying the distinction I make is that I don't really lose myself in games like that I get I get addicted to them and I get really really into them but I don't I, I never project myself on the player I never feel like I want oh well, it'd be awesome if I could do that I've never once felt that I don't think I love the fact that I can shoot people with a big shotgun and stuff but I'd, I'd never want to do that myself you know no that's what I mean that, that it's this is really difficult to explain. It is really difficult. Um, <laughs> well, while, while we're thinking, I'm just going to say hello to people in the channel because we've got a fair few people today. We do, yeah. Uh, we've got Dabo07, who we haven't seen before. Hello, Dabo, how are you doing? Uh, Mythalaw, uh, Slater. I always get Slater's wrong name Slater. wrong. Slater. Yeah, I, was, I actually was calling him Slayer for ages in my head because obviously I spoke to him on Twitter. Um, anyway, what Potato Power and Zombie, uh, all four of them are... are, are Welcome back. You've, you've been before. <laughs> but anyway, so um, yes, so we've. Well, the one explain, when we're then. <laughs> well, but, but the thing is, I mean, I I see actually quite a lot of parallels between the way I play games and the way Steve plays games, and it's very different to the way you do it because, like Steve said, there he's always him when he plays games. I'm always me when I play games, and I do. If there's choices in games, I will take the choices that I would take in real life. Whereas you've said many times, you like to explore both choices. You like to be devil's advocate in every kind of part of the game, and you'll save things just to try things out. So mm. you're you're almost slightly more disconnected from games than perhaps me and Steve are. In, in that you're playing well, it I've as just a, admitted as much. If if yeah. you if you guys do actually get lost in your mind, you know, somehow get kind of engrossed with it and lost. I can do that, but only because I'm paying attention to it. But I don't. I don't know. It doesn't. Have you never lost yourself in like a good book or a movie or even an album, where you're just completely absorbed by that? Um. I never. Think, I think the last time I did heroin, I was pretty absorbed. No, I obviously haven't done heroin. <laughs> Sorry. No, I um. I, I don't yeah, that's know. stuff I've, you get isn't heroin. I haven't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have sat back, like I've, I've got a new Mastodon album, for example, and I, I, the first, because I was excited about this particular album, I put it in and sat on my lazy boy and listened to the entire thing with with absolutely no interruptions. But that, yeah. I don't still don't see that as disconnecting from myself. I'm always aware of what's going on around me. I'm always aware of... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's maybe not something you experience then, but I, like with a good book, and I, I know Lou's had this as well, 
where basically you start reading for, you think, I'll just read a couple of chapters. And next thing you know, you look at it, it's dark. You think, yeah. right, it's like three o'clock in the morning, and you're like, oh, shit, I've just read for seven hours straight or something. No? I, get, I, get, I get like that with my work. You, you seem to be quite analytical about it, uh, Chris, and that you kind of step back and you, 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 you appreciate it as um, a piece of creative. Yeah, whereas, I, I, that, whereas I, we kind of we appreciate it as a as a as an environment to get into. I mean, I, I love game. I love gaming environments. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean that I'm I'm I totally disconnect myself in terms of I you know I don't analyze it and go this is definitely a game and I, you know I'm oh that's a pretty texture. You know I've never been like that with games. You know I've never been really anal- like that. Oh God, I don't know what I've been like. Why do we have to do this show? It's a rubbish idea. <laughs> well, maybe we're starting on this too deep. Well, so, it's going to get deep pretty quick, though, isn't it? Because it's Yeah, but if we can game? start off kind of like shallow and then get deeper, it's easier than just plunging straight in, isn't it? Essentially, <laughs> I, I play games because I enjoy just them. tell all the ladies that, don't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, you, you can't just go balls deep straight away. <laughs> Well, I, I, see, see I, I'm the same then. That, there we go. There we've got yeah. the top level, high level out of the way. Let's get deep. It, it's enjoyable, <laughs> but why is it enjoyable? What, what do you actually find enjoyable about it? What do you use it for? I mean, do you de-stress to it? Do you come home and feel really agitated and think, right, I need to play a game I can myself? No. Well, do you think, I've got a free afternoon? There's nothing I would rather do than just sit in front of my computer and play games. So it's like... I can't remember the last free afternoon it? I had. Uh, the, the, you know, my whenever I play a console game, because consoles are downstairs in a different... Well, apart from when I'm up here with you guys, yeah. um, <clears throat> I've got like a nice system downstairs that I go and sit in, and the problem is it's a thoroughfare between the kitchen and the living room, and, you know, Sal goes through through it, and it doesn't bother me in terms of, oh, God, you know, like a teenager, get out of the way, you know. I'm not like that, but it's still not really like the full it's like going to the cinema if someone talks yeah. next to you everyone gets a little bit annoyed don't they a little bit when someone talks in the <laughs> oh, cinema. Yeah. but it's still tolerable but it's like it's not a full experience i don't feel like I've, I've properly taken the game in unless i dedicate my time to it that's why i don't play many console games and that's why i don't play many story-based pc games these days because i don't have the time to dedicate to it because i don't have a spare afternoon because i'm always working and doing something related to one of my ventures <clears throat> none of them make any money by the way absolutely none of the business things that i do but everything that i do i treat like a business and i don't know why i'm like that he does win john a lot doesn't he <laughs> <laughs> but if you had the opportunity i know he's had the opportunity i know that you've you've you talked about how you you know the endings of games have brought tears to your eyes and things like that so it's not like it, it was you, wasn't it? You said you said that the end of um, it was um, no. Mass I cried. I cried at a book. I cried right. at a book, oh, and the ending of um, Gears of War. That's it. That's the one. Yeah. It made me feel sad. It made well, me feel yeah. really sad, but I didn't cry at it. Um, well, no, you, but, but it did. <laughs> I think Sam might have said he, he had a weep at some. I said it I got a bit of a look anyway, said it. But, <clears throat> yeah, it does because we kind of get to the bottom of what it is. That... <laughs> We get all these things. So uh, we just had a, a question in chat here. What is your guys' favourite indie game and why? Slightly off topic, but yeah, let's it let's is. answer it anyway. Um, God, gone, Lou, if you've got one. Indie game? Oof. Uh, God, I, I can name two off the top of my head that I have very, very fond memories of. And, and bearing in mind that my memories of indie games are within the last two years, you know, pretty yeah. much. <clears throat> number one that comes to the top of my head all the time is Gunpoint I think that was very well implemented and it was very fun to play but it wasn't long enough it really needed a lot more uh, lot more detail and Steve's looking it up as you can see by the big bright was... white that appeared on no, his face no, I, I just opened my Steam library to see what indie games have actually got installed to try and refresh my memory You've got a good but point as, as I was looking through them two sprung out straight away that was uh, Prison Architect mm-hmm. and uh, Cabal Space Programme I've not played Cabal, and I, I don't intend to either. I'm sure I've looked, I've seen people play it, and I've seen you play it actually. In fact, um, I, I, I'd like the idea, but it's again, it's another one of those buildy games that can last forever. <laughs> um, well, so what what drew you to play? I mean, it, it, this might seem like a bit of a crazy question, but what drew you to to the games that we're talking about? Let's try and get it back on topic a little bit. What what is it that you look for in a game? 
I liked the uh, of gunpoint specifically. I liked the the look of it. I liked the fact that I mean, I saw I, I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't see a video of it, and I saw the 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 cool little espionage action. You know, the fact you can jump and you uh, you can jump through windows, and if you go through the wrong window, someone will kill you if you. If you do the puzzles differently, the puzzles were really interesting. The whole thing interested me, you know, the whole package. I don't know. <clears throat> I like physics. Cool. It's a good thing you do, really, isn't it? <laughs> That's why I downloaded Cabal Space Program. Right. Which is, right. is essentially a Newtonian physics simulator with rockets. Mm. NASA simulator, isn't it, basically? Yeah, which is fun. I do. I like the idea of it, and I, and I I might get it at some point. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it. I don't think I put any building game right up there. But when I say that, you know what game I keep going back to, and I was only on it a couple of days ago again. Terraria. Planet Explorers. Terraria. Yeah. <laughs> don't know why. I never liked Minecraft. I never liked any of the other two D kind of builders either. But I love that one. There's something about it, and it's interesting. I've start. I've had to start start a new character because I've reinstalled my computer. And uh, for some reason, it didn't cloud save it, which you normally expect. But anyway, um, I just started again, and I'm already loving it again. I thought I'd be really frustrated, but I love it. <clears throat> I can't think of a single indie game that I, I could put on some kind of a list, which is crazy considering I kind of count myself as an indie game developer. What about your indie game? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Would you put that on your list? I haven't played it yet. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking um, through my indie game list tonight. I'm pool. Not an indie, but did you guys play Deus Ex? Somebody told yes. me the storyline was good, and but yeah, we all love Deus Ex. We're all massive fans of that. De Deus Ex is a major influence for the game that I'm actually developing at the moment, and I'm going to yeah. give it a bit of pimping because I don't know who asked that question. So it was uh, somebody. Not know. Yeah. Deus Ex <clears throat> is the reason why I'm a secret agent. Oh. Yeah, well, that's that's the reason I like stealth games. I think mainly because Deus Ex is a massive influence in. Other games that I choose and and the games that I develop, I think. I think Deus Ex, what it what it gives to me, like I was talking about that escapism and that that ability to to inhabit another world, it gives you so much of that. I think that's why a lot of people like it so much because it it's a, a very well realized and fairly complete, like independent world, and you feel like every mission that you're doing in the game is is your own thing to do. It's not like he's you, he's a start point. He's what you've got to do. Then you've got to do this, and you've got to do this, and then the mission ends. It's like you've been dropped into this this world with a few boundaries on it, and you've got to figure it out. And, and that's, I love that's that. what I like. I like the freestyle gameplay, is what I refer to it as. And I like the I like the fact that you've got free reign over what you do and which order you do it, and how yeah. you do the puzzles as well. Most of them have got some kind of choice involved in them, even though the choice isn't um, forced on you. It's it's kind of an implied choice, you know. Do I blow mm. the door up? Do I hack the security panel? Do I disable the laser grid? Do I go in through a vent? Do I go in through a a boat? Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, through a like a water thing. <laughs> yeah, a what? <laughs> a water thing. Um, no, but, uh, but great game. But anyway, it is just a, game, just a yeah. quick pimp of mine while I'm while I've got a chance. Ah. Uh, my game's called Subnet. If you check it out on www.19stoneninjas.com, um, I'll put the link in chat. Uh, it's like a stealth hacking parkour game. So it's like Mirror's Edge, Deus Ex, and kind of Dishonored, and lots of different influences, and there's, there's lots of kind of cyberpunk influence on the story side of things as well. Um, conspiracy theories and all the other stuff. Self-indulgence, over. Mythalot has mentioned first memorable game, and I think that's quite a good one to go into this, because... Uh... It does. The, the, there is the, that. It does kind of crystallise what it is that we look for when we play games. So but not necessarily because your first memorable game might not have been your favourite game. It might just be the game that you remember because no, of it's, the situation no, it's not, tied it's in. It's not about it being a, a favourite game, but it's certainly if it's a first. If it's a first memorable game, it must have some seed. That it must plant some seed that that later on you look for like for me it was isometric games it was stuff like night law and um marble madness yeah marble madness is a great one um that because it, it was it was but unbelievable world it was more believable than obviously the 2d platformer yeah. sort of thing of the time i think and my my 
Yeah, there's again we've got distinctions between eras here because I've got a lot of first memories of types of games. I can remember Super Mario 64 being like the first 3D game that I played. Uh, I think it was quite like no, hang on, first like third person 3D game. You know, I'd, I've been playing Quake 2 before then, so obviously I'd seen 3D. Um, but my first, the first game I actually played, and I think I mentioned this before again, is Postman Part on the Commodore 64. But is that first memorable game? Because that's a different thing. Um, yes, because it's my first memory of a game. Previous Fair to <clears throat> previous to that, I'd played on the Binetone and I'd played Atari, you know, old Atari games, and none of them really stuck with me for forever. You know, I wasn't really that impressed with them when I was a kid. The first memorable, <clears throat> the first game that I remember that had a really big kind of effect on me. I think. Do you remember how to be a complete bastard? Yeah. That was bells. That was just because. Um, Sorry, I don't Fizz? think it was Viz, no. No, it was uh, Adrian Edmondson. It's based on his book. Right. And um, just the scope of what you could do, and it was, it was a, a different grain to the games that were around at the time because it was all you know, hop over a road and you know, collect a frog or get coins or go through a mansion or whatever. This was walking around someone's house. Was it at a party? <laughs> yeah. Or something. You're at a and you could party. go around and you could like. Nick stuff out of people's pockets and shot stuff in the microwave and make it explode and squirting well, over people and I don't think there's any game since um, that has allowed you to put cling film over the toilet yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if, if you open an umbrella indoors you turn it into an oven <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you walk around the door flapping open what? <laughs> no, it, was, it was crazy but it was, uh, it was awesome like every time you played it it'd be the same scenario but because of the order you could do things or try things out. And there, there, there was no clear instructions giving you what to do, so you just walked around and tried things. Yeah. And the majority you, of times you tried something, they'd just come back with obscenities or something. You like, could do uh, that. I think there was, a curry, there was like a, a, a curry, and if you ate some of the curry, then you, it, you had a fartometer at the side, which showed how much <laughs> fart you had in you. <clears throat> if you like ate the some of the game. curry, it, it's kind of very... It's very in the same sort of vein, hmm. yeah. but if you ate all the curry, so you had two options: you ate some of the curry, or you ate all the curry. If you eat all of the curry, you explode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you could just walk around into the in the room and like with loads of people stood around and stuff farting, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it was, that is that was a very memorable game. And again, it's a, it's an escapism thing. I mean, for that one, it was a case of it was allowing you to indulge the the, yeah. the kind of mischievous side of actually trying these things out because you know, the whole point of the game was to piss everyone off yeah and come from someone who doesn't actively try to piss people off that kind of taking a bit of a holiday away from yourself yeah so, I don't try the game but I succeed uh, in every, every aspect pretty much <laughs> <laughs> I can only think of the Postal series that have kind of carried on that game purely about pissing people off the yeah, GTA is pretty much like that though isn't it you don't have to play it that way. The purpose of this game was to piss people off. Ah, okay. Yeah. And Postal would be more or less the same because you used to walk around pissing all over people and having a fight with Gary Coleman and stuff. I never played <laughs> Postal. I'm, I missed that train, unfortunately. I had I the original. I've got, I've got Postal 2 on a disc behind me, but I bet the disc doesn't work now. Yeah, I had the original, which was a 2D game with hand-painted backgrounds um, and like 3D models on yeah, top. Yeah. It was like a top-down view thing. That was more just about death and destruction, wasn't it? It was Postal yeah. 2. I think that brought the comedy aspect into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dabo Zero Seven remembers playing How to Be a Complete Bastard as well. Yeah. I'm, I don't remember playing it, but I'm, I've probably seen it's, it at some point. It's one of these games where I've had the opportunity to replay it on an emulator and I actually haven't loaded it up. You probably just because, spoil the memories. Yeah. I, I remember <laughs> it as being fantastic and you know hilarious. Yeah. And I don't want to take that memory away. I've got the book, so I can I'll lend you yeah. that if you want. Yeah, I actually wouldn't mind that. XCOM. XCOM. X yes, yes. Yeah, XCOM, the original XCOM. They're not talking here about the um, Praxis remake. This is the original XCOM UFO Defense. Um, the elitist. One of my favourite games, and one of the thing, one of the things that I loved about that game was it, it made me. It was almost a role playing experience because I used to go to school. Um, and when I wasn't working, I was like drawing pictures of the aliens, and the like you had to dissect aliens and stuff so you could capture them. Um, and you, if you got the corpses, then you'd dissect the corpses and find out a bit more about the aliens. 
And I, I, I for a, like a couple of years, I, I kind of almost felt like it was some kind of alien researcher or something like that. <laughs> it was, it was, it was like it affected me that much, and it had great atmosphere. It did have the I've music. Pl- the I've, I've played the first. Spect- I've played the first one. Um, not all the way through though. I didn't. You know, I played it too late. I think I was a late comer to it in general. But the new, the newer ones, I love. I love the yeah. uh, enemy within, enemy unknown. We actually did a stream, Steve and I, for those who yeah. might be interested. It wasn't a particularly successful stream because we, <laughs> we unfortunately encountered a few multiplayer bugs. Um, but yeah, we we we've got it up on YouTube, so check out our YouTube channel. Should be on the links below us. But um, even as good a game as uh, the remake is, compare it to the old one, and it's missing so much content. Yeah. Could you, was it multiplayer the old one? Could you play no. it? In no, there was there was someone released something called UFO two thousand, which let you play the uh, the, the kind of battlescape um, in multiplayer. It 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 wasn't a pure experience, but it's probably the closest you're gonna get to multiplayer in the original. Well, I've heard of uh, XCOM Long War Dabo. I've, uh, I'm considering getting it actually. It's a add on for uh, for the the latest XComs. Yeah. Uh, oh well, actually, there may be an old one, old add-on as well, but I don't know. But there, there's an add-on for the latest ones, and it just makes it insanely difficult. Adds loads of extra options to it. Um, it's, it's, I think it's unofficial, but it's, it's, it looks really, really cool. Right. It, it sounds like really it's probably cool. trying to move it more towards its roots. The original, then. yeah. Um, I said the original enemy, was ridiculously hard. Enemy within I... as well also added quite a lot of extra options, so you could turn off save scumming options and turn <laughs> off, turn on and off the random number generator. Etc. Right. But anyway, we kind of so. we kind of moving on to games that we enjoy and things like that. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I said well, I'm, I think I'm I'm happy to have a, a kind of relaxed show with this one. You know, we've got some people asking questions. So if any of you guys do have any more questions for us, uh, as long as they're game related, obviously, um, and hopefully as related to why do we play games as possible, then uh, just just let us know. One thing so- I did find is. Um, Ten reasons uh, why adults who play video games are happier. Go on then. First reason is they are more connected to their inner child. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I, I'm all of the gamers that I know are all, are all none of them are boring. Oh, well, I said I, I think I don't think I'm boring, but I'm not no. childish, unfortunately. You're not childish, but you never have been. You, I, I yeah. remember when you were 17 and you were still like, you, yeah, you were telling me I, I was monocle. running my own company when I was 14. No, I was living on my own when I was 14. I was running my own company by the time I was 16. Um, so you know, I've I've had a pretty business my violin? life. <laughs> oh, I'm not asking for any sympathy. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, reason number two: they have an easy escape from the stress of life. Now, I wouldn't say that I escape from life. I don't think I escape no, from, stress. Escape from I, the stress of life. Yeah, I don't think I do that. I think the escapism is a different kind of escapism for me. It's the ability to go somewhere that's different. It's not the ability to go somewhere that's not as as harsh or upsetting as the one that you're already in. I mean, I enjoy life. I'm quite happy. And yeah. I think that the ga- gaming just allows me to do things that I couldn't normally do. It's an enabler. Um, I I don't yeah. I don't agree with that one. I don't escape playing games, which I've already said. I think, um, mm. but I do yeah. I do appreciate that some people can do that. I I as I actually said before, not only do I have to set time aside to go downstairs and play games, I have to make sure that everything is finished first. I haven't got OCD or anything like that. I'm I'm not you know I'm not like one of these who turns the light on and off a million times and wipes wipes everything down, but. I have to be satisfied in my own mind that I've done enough of my work, my personal projects for the day before I can play games. And quite often, I've got so carried away and I enjoy doing my projects so much that I don't get time to do the games. But you do have that Excel spreadsheet with um, every time you've taken a wee and how much you weed, uh, which is a bit weird, really. Uh, no, I don't. I've, I've dumped the spreadsheet. I'm using right. a, I'm using a, a Tupperware tub now, and I'm I'm keeping what? different sections of wee. So, so you know, it's like one of them uh, pill boxes that your, right. your grandma has, and uh, I've got we in each section for each day of the week. I mean, well, but playing <clears throat> playing video games itself is something that you do just for the sake of doing it. It's not something that gives you there's there's no end result, is it? It's it's something that you do to enjoy for the sake of enjoying it. It's it's and a, it's, there's very few things as an adult that you get to do like that. You know, if 
you want to go and spend some time in the garden, you got to cut the lawn. You know, you've got to, there's, there's all these things that you have to do because there's, there's an end. You may enjoy the means sometimes, but there's always an end. Whereas with games, there isn't. It's you doing something for the sake of doing but it. But we don't consciously enter a game knowing that we're wasting our time. We, no, we enter I'm, it. I'm not saying wasting time. I, I don't think time spent enjoying yourself is wasted at all. No, no. Us as gamers, we are. We yeah, we enjoy playing games and we we want to play games because we get enjoyment out of them. I think what we're trying to establish is how what that actual enjoyment is and how we get it from. And we're all different. By the you know, mm, obviously, we're all different. Yeah, even something us that... three have, have got very different reasons and ideas about why games are cool. Yeah, <coughs> Zombies just mentioned uh, only MMOs stress me, and I've got to agree with that. And I think that's something that actually spoils games for me is other people. Yeah, I love playing games with you guys, but an MMO, if I tried to play an MMO now, I'd get really annoyed with people. If I tried to play a, co- a competitive game online like Counter-Strike or something like that, I've tried it and yeah, I hate yeah. it. I don't I play publics anymore. I occasionally yeah. pop on a public server for a new game or something. Or I mean, I've um, I quite enjoyed playing Killzone uh, three on uh, or two, two and three. I think I played online uh, on the PS3 and P- <laughs> on the PS3. Yeah, and um, I really enjoyed that. But I didn't really hear about anyone else, and there was you know the the games were quite interesting in in comparison to all the other shooters that were out then. So that's the only reason I enjoyed that. But yeah, I'm with you there. Mm. Is that because we we are sorry? Just uh, is that because we are such kind of old school gamers? I mean, we've done the whole multiplayer thing years ago. We've been playing since Quake Two and probably earlier, but um, But we certainly Quake Two online. So we've kind of seen this, seen this, um, seen the community grow and then become toxic. We also have the advantage of yeah, essentially we are old old gadgy gamers aren't we these days I yeah. know I know there's older gamers than us I'm not saying we're the oldest or anything like that but I'm just it's at the end of the day we've kind of we've established how we like to play games whether we can vocalise that or not we know how, what we enjoy and we know that if we're going to play a multiplayer game playing with randomers is always unpredictable and it's mm. it's never going to be as fun as playing with like seeing your two stupid faces when I'm battering you online because it's it's cool it's 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 awesome even though it's a bit awkward to see steve's face go a little bit red when he starts getting annoyed with me when we're playing a game it's only because you take 15 minutes to go on civilization <laughs> or whatever we're doing it, it it doesn't matter that it's in, it's cool that but at the same time it's it's interesting to watch um, Lou's downfall when he can't play a game very well and he gets really, really <laughs> upset with himself. And he just ends yeah, up like, he's, he's, oh, he starts swearing at himself. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, you dickhead. Why are you doing that, you dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, th- that's reason four on this list um, is that they immediately have something to bond over with with other people. And it is something you bond over. You know, I, like I we've would, all bonded over games. Yeah. I would rather talk. Yeah, we have, and we talk about more than just games these days. And we do. And yeah. you, I mean, you two known each other a lot longer than I've known you two, but it's still, yeah, it's still formed kind of some kind of group, hasn't it? A, a group bonding of some sort. A common yeah. interest. So, what's next on the list? Uh, they are exposed to greater creativity and imagination. Then what? Then people who don't play games. Well, you say that to an artist, uh, well, or yeah, but. I can play games and look at art. They can. I, I'd at ag- yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd yeah. say oh, okay. <laughs> games give you experience in things that yeah. sometimes it's it's useful experience. Like I'd say the people who know uh, who learn to play driving games and racing games well are good drivers. I, I've been I in situations think the people where who I've play been... them well, not people who think they play them well. No, people who do play them. I mean, I've been in situations where I've been in a car where the car has lost control and I've known instantly what to do. Yeah, instinctually, because yeah, because of playing games, that's actually um, happened to me a couple of times when the arse ends, the cars went, and you automatically turn into the skid. Yeah, and you correct yourself, and you just kind of think, no, shouldn't be doing this. No, it's, it's no that's like, what you should be doing. You've, you've saved yourself, from, well, saved the car, stopped yourself from crashing, whatever. Then you kind of think, that how, how did I know how to do that? Because driving a car he's isn't. Not, he's got a good point. A human I know. I know that because my dad taught me that because he, he taught me when I was quite young how to drive in like fields and in yeah. snow and you know told me explained what gears were for and how to how to drive properly. Um, gears are for what? <laughs> um, but yeah, on, on, on the flip side, um, I, I've played a lot of first-person shooters, and I went to America and shot guns, and I was crap at it. 
and it was disappointing. It was really disappointing because because of the car thing. I thought I should be good with guns as well. Yeah, but a car is a lot enough. easier to control than a gun is. It, to it is, it is. But but it, it's it is interesting. It's got goes both yeah, ways. Yeah. But I do think that you do get valid life experience from playing games. I I agree with that. I th- I think uh, again uh, we've got the argument of we've we've talked about it before. Again, going off topic a little bit, but we talked about games and violence a little bit and talking about does it affect do games affect people and and that kind of thing. In in our eyes, personally, I don't think it's really affected my life for the worse. It has. I've had a little bit of a detrimental effect in terms of social life and um, interacting with other people. <coughs> but but I've also gained a lot of friends from it. Look at what uh, what counts for a social life these days. You know, I know people that their social life is going out to the same pubs week in week out, the same nightclubs with the same people, listen to the same music. And yes, that's okay every now and again, but that shouldn't be a staple. That shouldn't be, you know. But it's the same with anything. Everybody, people like routine. Yeah. People don't it's like change. Routines. I'm, I'm, I certainly wouldn't say I'm any better or worse than those people. Without what I do, I spend all my time at home working, playing games, sitting with my wife, watching telly, you play, you know, absorbing media of some sort. You see, I, I, I think this. I've still got quite a good active social life. Um, I've got a lot of things that I do outside games, um, stuff that I enjoy. Maybe not as much as games, but. I've made the conscious decision to do what I do now, though, because I have had times in my well, long periods in my life where I've been very social and I've not really been involved in online communities and uh, playing games as much as I would. I've, you know, I've been out drinking with friends. I've been out making different social groups, getting involved in the music scene locally and things like that. And that that kind of thing, I don't know. It kind of wears off after a while. You get a little bit. I can't be asked. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather stay at home and be comfortable, not get tinnitus. Well, games seem to, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to get old. You no. know, we've been sat essentially in the same position now with the keyboard and mouse in front of us. They haven't changed much. You know, for how many years now? You know, 15, 17? And I'm still 17, playing games from yeah. 17 years yeah. ago, occasionally, uh, yeah. if I fancy it. So, um, how is it then that? That doing this hasn't got bored, but yet so many other activities that you used to do, you used to, that you used to um, put time aside to enjoy, don't anymore. Well, you got to think that game playing games isn't an act, a single activity, is it? I mean, climbing is a single activity, running is a yeah. single activity, but playing games is a multitude of activities all based around a single kind of bottleneck <coughs> interaction method. What do you mean that it's multiple activities? Well, they, they, every game's different. There's lots yeah, of games. But each run could be different. There's lots yeah, of different Yeah, but you're surfaces. still just running. You, you, you're still doing the same thing in a different environment. Yeah, uh, but you could... There's... I, I, kind of, I kind of see where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I know what you're trying to get at, but I think that if, if, if you take it down to brass tacks, then playing a game is one activity. Well, if, if if you count all your separate fingers, it may be eight activities. But you are sat in front of a mouse and keyboard, moving them in the same fashion you would do any yeah, other Yeah, but time. the thing, you, thing you're doing so, in the game is different. Dis- I've got to disagree there, because playing even playing Quake and Quake 2 are two very different games. Mm. In terms yeah. of the control system and what and the buttons I have to press in order to do the things that I need to do in order to be yeah, good but you're still game. pressing buttons with your finger and you're still moving a mouse with your hand. You are. I, I, so your question is basically why do we st- why are we still entertained by by I don't know are we are we yeah. also entertained by PCs because do get do console gamers get bored of just playing games uh, eventually? I mean they don't. Sam Sam still plays yeah. Games. I think I think this is this is a wider t- the wider kind of topic because it's like saying. Do you get bored of watching movies? Well, no. If there's different movies each time, then I don't get bored of it. If I had to watch the same movie over again, I would get bored of it. Same with but, books or any other um, consumable medium. Hmm. So I, uh, I think you can't yeah, really but, get bored of the act of gaming, although some people have. No, because gaming isn't the same as a movie. A different game would be the same as a movie. So you've got. Hun- you know, thousands of games. You got thousands of movies. The activity of playing a game. Yeah. 
is like, is is different though. That this is what Lou was saying. Uh, play the activity of playing a game is different every time. The activity of sitting down and consuming a movie or consuming television requires nothing from you apart from a little bit of attention, and even that is questionable. I think playing a game requires your full undivided attention. It requires a little bit of involvement and investment and bought buying into the product. You can watch a film and not pay any attention to it. I do that. I do that all the time because I'm just not interested in that kind of thing at the moment. But I will get back <clears> into that. So the reason I think, Daddy, it doesn't get old is because it is um, a mental stimulus. It's mm. yeah, and that kind of ignores the fact that you are still sat in the same position doing the same things with your hands, because you you tend to forget about that connection. Yeah, your yeah, brain you do. Moves it. And it's the same, um, you have like long distance runners that run to the point where they're going to a trance and then they forget they're actually running. Yeah. Uh, and I, it, it's... Yeah, it happens with like even driving, you know, you drive for long enough and you don't remember driving to work. Mm. You just remember getting to work. And That's quite worrying that sometimes. Yeah. I think that's with anything you can offload it to your subconscious and just start to do it. <clears throat> but that doesn't make any less enjoyable. And no. certainly, with ga because games offer a different, uh, well, some games offer a different um, experience each time, or a slightly different experience each time, you can't ever push it into complete subconscious. I mean, like, like you say, I, that's a really interesting point, actually. When, when you play games, you, you do forget that you're pressing a keyboard and mm -hmm. moving a mouse or moving a joy pad, so although I do remember that I'm using a joy pad at the moment. Um, and again, going back to the um, the Oculus Rift, you know, you wear it for five minutes. You wear it for a minute, and you're blown away by what you're seeing in the game. You forget that you're looking at rather big pixels, yeah. um, and you're getting slightly dizzy from it. You're just looking around and thinking, I'm in this scene, and I'm, I don't have anything on my head. And you control it with a mouse and keyboard, and you're not even thinking about that either. So it's immersion... Um, and mental stimulus at a kind of very direct level. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with books and movies, I guess, to a point. Why have I got bored of movies, then? That's well, just because Hollywood. That, personally. No, no, it's not that at all. It's it's that I don't feel... I don't know what... I, it, when When I think about it, it doesn't make any sense because I will easily sit down and spend more time working or playing games than watching a film but my issue is it requires two hours of my undivided attention but I've just said that games require the same and they do but I just enjoy games a lot more yeah so you're prioritising them over movies mm. Chris do you play long stints of games I, I mean I tend, to, I tend to finish a single player game in two sittings these days um, it depends entirely on the type of game I'm playing um I play. I don't know. I've. I think the maximum session I've had recently is about an eighteen-hour session playing something like. Trying to think eighteen hours. My head. Uh, that, that's a that's a long one. You know that's a. Oh, that is. That's waking up, playing games entire the entire day, then going to sleep again. Yep, and I'd, I've done that occasionally on a weekend because I'm like today, I'm not doing any work. I'm having my day off. Or whatever. I don't even have a day off every week. I just say it myself occasionally. I need to chill. Let's play a game. So I just choose a game that I really, really want to play, and I hammer it. And then I probably won't again. I, I start so many games like that, and then don't have the time to finish them, or I didn't like them enough for me to be able to pick them yeah. up again. Mm. So. Yeah, I've, I've had that situation with uh, Bioshock Infinite. Actually, I've got quite near the end, I think, and I've. Just not gone back to it, and that's typical of lots of games. And Steve knows this. I, I, I'm a bastard for not finishing games. Yeah. If I can't do it in two sittings, or if I get right near the end, something stops, like stops me wanting to play it. Well, it's almost you a don't fear want to of the end. It. Yeah, yeah. Like Final Fantasy VII was like that. I never finished Final Fantasy VII the first time I played through it. No, neither did I. Got I got near the end and then watched the <clears> ending <throat> on Steve's. I didn't even get that far. I played about two hours of it, about four separate occasions. Didn't like it, and then fell in love with it somehow I, I kept trying it because everybody was going on about it and I was like I've got to like this game everyone likes this game and I'm, and I'm glad I did I'll be honest mm. but unfortunately not every game is worth that amount of effort no <laughs> but some are 
There um, seems to be at the moment as well uh, with games in general. There seems to be a, a with AAA games a, a high focus on um, quality these days. Quality in terms of getting voice actors on, getting um, you know, getting big composers in there, getting big names in order to sell more units. Now Market. to yeah. It's it's to it's to make them more popular, and they are becoming more popular as a medium as well. They're not just they're not just for geeks anymore, are they? Have we not seen this somewhere before, though? E, probably Hollywood. Yeah, you got to a point where every movie that came out had ridiculous effects, but no substance. Transformers. Yeah. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> Anything by Michael Bay, basically. Anything by Michael. Michael Bay needs to die of needles. <laughs> <laughs> but that 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 does that does that re- remove my enjoyment? I mean, uh, from from that game, I, because of that, or is it because they're focusing on the wrong thing? Because these these studios have got hundreds of people working on these games, and there's no re- there's no way that they couldn't make a quality game as well as. What's the last AAA title you actually bought and enjoyed? Bought and enjoyed. Lou, same question to you. I'm actually um, going to check my Steam library now to see. Last AAA title I bought and enjoyed would probably be Far Cry Three. That's but a I was thinking, I was call. thinking uh, like a really massive budget, massive team, massive marketing title that I really enjoyed was Grand Theft Auto Five. Brilliant what? game. Borderlands Two is that recent? No, it's not, is it? No, it's, it's but, well but, but old Grand Theft yeah. GTA Five is a good example of, of of a game done well, even despite the fact that it had a massive marketing budget and all the rest of it. Yes and no. I liked the story in that. For once, I liked the story, and I thought the gameplay in that game was a lot worse. It was an improvement on four, but it was still worse than a lot of the other previous 3D incarnations. Most, in fact, all of the other previous 3D incarnations, I'd say, because um, it again focused a lot on the big picture. You know, in terms of the the massive world with all of the collectibles and. Not really that much to do in the world, really, when you thought about it. If you take out the things like the, you know, the, the fact you can steal any car, you take out the things like you can go in um, one or two of the buildings. It's not. It's not really that interesting. I disagree. I'd say that it's a very well realized world, and I spent a lot of time just exploring it, going to the top of Mount Chiliad and things like that. Well, I, I, I did as well, but I, I didn't find much in that game that intrigued me as much as San Andreas did for example and I'm comparing it to previous titles of the same developers so it's you know I think that's quite fair mm. when you look at the fun that was in I know you didn't like San Andreas as much as, as I did when you look at the fun involved in that game and the the diversity of scenery it just I don't know there's something about GTA 5 I, I'm not saying it was a bad game I enjoyed it mm. Something Skyrim's, about it, though, that wasn't Skyrim's getting passed around in the chat a lot, and yeah. we, t- we tend to talk about Skyrim every episode because it is a stalwart game, isn't it? It's a big, it's a big budget, uh, big title that was very good, and it, it was progressively. I think that the Elder Scrolls series in general has been progressively better with each release. Not massively better. Each one promises a lot, but doesn't deliver it entirely. Mm. But everyone gets consistently better, which is only uh, can only be a good thing. Morrowind was great. Oblivion was better. Skyrim was better. Oh, some and some people would disagree one, there. The, the, well, the next one I think will be better too. And let's just ignore Elder Scrolls Online because that's just a World of Warcraft cash in. Yeah. Do you know how much money was uh, spent on the marketing for Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two? One hundred and forty um, million or something like that. Hello. I would say more than the budget for the game. Um. The marketing cost was two hundred million dollars. Um, do you want to guess at the development cost? Uh, I'm going to go more than that. Right. I, I'm not. I reckon games are still an, under the hundred million mark. I think. Fifty. Fifty. Fifty million. Yeah. So it's a quarter of the marketing budget was actually for developing right. the game. Fair enough. 
That just That's seems 50 ridiculous. million still a bloody lot though, isn't it? Well, with ten t- with movies, the um the marketing budget for for the kind of the, the the big summer movies, the ten the marketing budget tends to be about equal with the budget of the movie itself, which in most movies these days hovers around the 120 to 150 million mark. It's atrocious, isn't it? The amount of money <laughs> that, this, that gets spent on this shit. Five hundred million US dollars, apparently. Destiny's cost. Yeah, I've I've arguably had much more fun. Uh, the last uh, modern, uh, hang on. Yeah, the, I think it was Modern Warfare Two was the last one I bought. I think yeah. I got Black Ops and Black Ops Two. But what? Hang on, hang on. Which ones? Co- there was a Modern Warfare that came out after Black Ops. Was that three then? I have no idea. I think the only is one and two. Can't Whatever the latest one is, and the one that came out after Black Ops and not Ghosts, because I haven't got that. I got yeah. Black Ops 1, I bought Black Ops 2, I didn't play 2 at all, I've got it still in the cellophane downstairs, and um, didn't like 1, Black Ops 1, and then when Call of Duty, whatever, 2, uh, Modern Warfare 2 came out, I yeah. played it a bit. I've lost my train of thought, sorry. It's a bit of a comparison though, for example, um, Metal Gear Solid 4. That costs seventy million to develop, and the marketing cost is pretty much non-existent. Um, uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't. They, they don't really market it though. There's, there's be like previews in magazines, but they won't be doing billboards and like cinema trailers and things like that, like I've, they do with. I, I, Call I, of I Duty. just think that now with these type of things, <clears throat> certain companies are looking at games as not making some of really well. You know this anyway, but they're just looking at them now more like. <laughs> How can we make the most money out of these as possible while investing as little money and time and effort? Yep. Yeah, or investing all the, all, of, all the effort into marketing because time and time again it's shown that good marketing can make a, a crappy product sell. I mean, yeah. uh, um, where is it? Someone mentioned FIFA 15 in the chat. Now, I, I've never liked football games. I don't like football. I don't like the games. I've never enjoyed a single football game. I find them frustrating and annoying. But I know that that game has sold huge amounts and people mm. are hailing it as the best thing since sliced bread it will be a tiny bit better than FIFA 14 with some new players in it and people who invest in the whole football thing will be investing in the fact that it's got new players, new teams whatever, it's more accurate it brings them closer to the idea that they're and that's why FIFA closer to football sells more than the PES series because PES doesn't have uh, Premier League licensing it's got some other league, like some South American League or something, uh, some other leagues around the world that aren't yeah. anywhere near as big as the the, the FA Cup. Or the F- <laughs> I'm terrible at football, by the way, so I'm sorry if I say anything that's irrelevant. But FIFA gets all the sales because people want to buy it for that. Uh, did you did someone give us a marketing quote for that? How much they sold it? How much they spent on? Um, I'm sure Steve could bring those figures up for us. Uh... <laughs> Yes, that's a good point, actually. With Mythalos just said, a lot of games are just treated as platforms for selling content. Look at the App Store, free yeah. to play stuff. I mean, I don't enjoy I don't enjoy that aspect of it. I enjoy playing free to play games when they are actually free to play. Well, it's interesting. Have you seen what they're doing with the new Unreal Tournament game? No. Nope. They are doing exactly that. They're releasing it as a free platform with a marketplace where people can sell mods and maps and and games built on the engine people can sell or they can sell yeah no they they can sell basically they're they're creating an engine they're creating some initial content with consultation from the community and then they're going to release the game for free with a marketplace an app store basically inside unreal tournament where you can get maps for micropayments maps mods models weapons they're playing on I like that idea. I think content is okay to buy like that. I mean, if you don't, if if it isn't required to play the game and enjoy the game, but when it comes to things like you know, I've always had problems with map packs. You know, I spent so much on Call of Duty map packs, map, map packs when I used to play it on my console. It was is it, it's, I, I can't believe that we have to spend that much on. They used to be free for God's sake when we used to play, and we we made our own. You know, we used we to did, play but- some amazingly designed maps. Amazingly designed maps, but you can imagine the, the, the amount of time that goes into making a map for a modern game. Like a, a Call of Duty map, you, you couldn't get... Well, it'd be very rare for a single person to be able to create a map of the same kind of quality. Well, you're creating a game, basically. You're doing what I'm yeah. doing at the moment. 
the, 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 a, lo a lot of the budget that goes into modern games goes into, like you say, environment design, asset creation, because the engine's done, pretty much. The world, is, on the other hand, is an absolute bitch to create. Arguably. It turns out uh, that the development cost of FIFA, FIFA 15 wasn't actually that much because it's just a reskin of FIFA 13. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just development, a... but what about marketing costs? So that was, uh, that's what I asked. I don't have any information oh, on fair that. Fair enough. I'm sure it was huge, the marketing. In comparison, yeah. 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 But they'll also have a sponsorship from FIFA um, and everything else that comes with it, you know. I mean, that that the FIFA series to me is not just flogging a dead horse, but it's like flogging the glue that you've made from the dead horse. It's, it's just basically you're buying an upgrade pack every year, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Essentially. But for full price. But that's always the problem with sports games. And let, anyway, none of us talk about, none of us play sports games, so let's t stop talking about them. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, if you play sports games, you're not a gamer. Go back home. <laughs> you heard. Go You're going to be popular with your beard. Come at me, bro. <laughs> um, so, yes, back onto the subject of why we play games. I play games because I enjoy them. I play, I play games because I... <laughs> what? Was I doing that? No, I just could... I play games because I enjoy them. Well, Can we just yeah. stop there? I'm, no, I'm just summarising. I think it was a Fuck you. I, I, I play games because I enjoy it. I, I play games because they give me fulfillment in terms of... Um, I always, and this includes in my, in my social life and in my professional life, I always strive to get my, my synapses going. You know, I always want interesting stuff to do. I always want to be challenged, even if it's just a little challenge. You know, if, if I've got something new to learn, I'm interested. If I have to keep rehashing the same thing, then I get bored of it, and the same applies to games. If I have to I'm keep a... doing the same thing over and over in a game, I'll get bored, unless it's a really, really intricate, interesting thing that I have to keep doing. I'm going to draw comparisons here with the, the stereotypical metal fan. Now, there is, a, there is a breed of people, and you are one of these, who appreciate... The, the, they all tend to like metal music for some reason, but they tend to appreciate the music for the technicality and for the, 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 the difference yeah. and the originality. Well, any, any, whenever I wrote music, I always wrote it based on the challenge. I didn't yeah. ever write it based on the melody or the songwriting or the, the, the vocals or anything like that. I just wanted to make it difficult to play for everybody so we were all trying to learn it and become better. You and know, Greg, and challenging ourselves. Greg's in the same boat. Greg's a metal fan and he's the same. Th he does the same thing. He, he analyzes things based on how difficult they were to make and how technical and how accomplished they were, and the level of skill involved in making it above the experience of it, the, the thing itself. I think Greg does go a little bit further than me. Uh, Greg is one of our friends, as you yeah. may have heard before. Um, he goes a little bit further than me in that, yes, I think his sole reason for liking music is how technical it is. From what I can tell from his mm. tastes and the way that he's spoke about things to me, and when he's explained things, he's been... You know, he's always drumming. He's always doing something when he's when he's listening to yeah. anything with a beat in it, um, and it's always dead fast mental stuff. Whereas I do like quite a, a wide range of music. That's I int I'm interested in lots of different things to do with the music, not just anyway. Getting off subject again. Well, no, because it's the the point I'm trying to make is that, that you do seem to have that same thing about games. You just said there that you like things which are clever and things which are original mm. and different. I like now choices. I do as well. I like I like things which are new and in, 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 impressive. But you know, I I, I can enjoy uh, the the game a game with the worst graphics imaginable, like a roguelike. I can get really into stuff like Dwarf Fortress and and uh, really shitty Askai uh, graphics mm -hmm. roguelikes because I love the atmosphere, and my my imagination can work for it. It doesn't have to be clever. It just has to be atmospheric. A dark room. Yeah, oh, Dark Room is a brilliant game. Right, guys, um, someone find a link and put it in there. I'll tell everyone about Dark Room. Dark Room. Room yeah, well, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's, um, uh, put a link in the chat. A Dark Room is um, it's a browser game, and basically you start off in a dark room, and you have to light a fire, and then you have to keep going and going. Was it done by Notch? Was it Notch? No, no it wasn't Notch. It was, he, did uh... a show, he did something like that, but it was something to do with adolescence, wasn't it? Yeah. That was one of his first games, or he's a browser. But anyway... Um, this yeah, this this one in particular, dark. Oh, double speak. Cool, interesting. Um, yeah, I um, I thoroughly enjoy. It. I keep playing. I've still got my save in my Dropbox that I keep reloading into browsers wherever I well, not work, but everywhere else, you know. And I'm, I love playing it. It's 
Have you played this day? No, I'm, I'm just continually stalking a fire at the minute. Yeah, I wouldn't play it now because you will literally just be dragged away from us. I, I swear to God, it is extremely addictive. It, it's a brilliant, brilliant implementation of uh, RPG. Basically. And it's dripping with atmosphere. It's well written, and it it's like it is like a book. And it gets it's a bit frustrating in places, but it 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 alleviates the frustration by giving you a little bit more every now and then. Yeah, uh, you get to a point where you've you know you're you're out in the wilderness hunting. Don't and you, spoil you, it. Blah, 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 blah. But you don't know you'll get it. the idea when you start playing it. It's like it's obvious what's going to happen. I don't know what happens at the end. I haven't completed it. If you I've completed it can complete it um, <laughs> and candy box yeah candy box <clears throat> i think came before this um uh as well, Mithlos said i used to play um planetarium as well if you remember that planetarium yeah planetarium not pla planetarium 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 yeah yeah which was, was a planet full of blonde people yeah <laughs> so um <laughs> Yeah, that was an old browser game where you'd, it was basically numbers and you just had to send <laughs> 10 million Excel ships. Excel Wars. Yeah, send um, 10 million ships to attack a planet or, or rock or something, I don't know. It's a long time ago since I played that. But I've forgotten why I mentioned a dark room. What were you talking about previously? Well, uh, atmosphere. Uh, atmosphere, they, regardless of the quality of the game. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you there because I can get totally addicted to those kind of games. And it is. It's the way that I don't know the way that it immerses. I can get addicted to Scrabble for God's sake. <laughs> I haven't played Scrabble for so long at the moment. I said to the missus the other day, "Should we have a go?" Because we haven't played for a while, and she's like, "Yeah, kill cool, up for that." It's just another way to waste time, but it's still a game and it's still interesting. You know, it, I, it, I, it, I I've played criminally little Scrabble and I love the game. So you need to bring it with you next oh, week. I'm really up for it. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'll bring. I'll try and remind me because I've got a lot of stuff to bring, haven't I? Okay. Um, for those who may be interested, we haven't made a full decision on this yet, but we may be streaming uh, the LAN party that we've got going um, in a few weeks. Not sure how we're going to do it technically or if it's a good idea in general because uh, there's obviously going to be a lot of swearing and a lot of... Um... <laughs> like there isn't any shows already. I think, uh, we've... <laughs> I, I think it'd be a lot worse, I'll be honest with you, because um, we'd be, we'd be more relaxed that. and... Um, I said. Plus, as I said before, we all do heroin at these things, so you'd be seen as doing that. Well, and, that that, uh, that won't be too bad. We'll just be laid on the floor, going. <laughs> that's how that's how you play games, anyway, Lou. It is, yeah. That's that's how I just go, go through <clears throat> life in general. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to do it yet or not, but we'll see. We'll see how we we get on with it. <sighs> Steve, you look like you've had something on your lips for ages. He's playing the dark room. <laughs> I've, I've I've just minimised it. <laughs> Don't minimise it. Make sure you save the key. Well, no, just close the, it. Just the, close the it. It saves it in your browser. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So there's a few other things that um uh, that we in relation to this that we can talk about. Um, what what are the benefits and the drawbacks to to gaming? I assume. Well, we discussed a lot of the benefits, haven't we? But what about drawbacks? I mean, have, have we been negatively well, affected by games? We haven't been through all the benefits yet. Oh, let's let's go on then. Um, let's do with the list. Oh, to, they have a more balanced life perspective. I think this these a lot of these are very, <laughs> are very are generalising, aren't there? A yeah, lot of them. They have better hand-eye coordination. Yes, definitely. No. Definitely. No, it someone, does. Someone else might have better hand-eye than me. Well, yeah, they do, but... To be but on average. On average, yeah, gamers know how to, to coordinate the hands and eyes since that's pretty much how... The only way you can get decent at games. <laughs> <laughs> um, they always have something to look forward to. <laughs> that sounds quite sad, that <laughs> If you don't have something to look forward to, then, then you've got problems. Yeah, yeah and to be fair, everybody needs a hobby. <laughs> that's the thing. I think, yeah, the one thing you can take from this is... We're not saying we're better or anything like that than anybody else, but we are. Um, but <laughs> I think it's a hobby thing, isn't it? Everybody needs something to do. People can get very, very depressed or very, I don't know, um, separated from reality if they don't have a stimulus of some sort, if they do just go home and watch telly or whatever. You know, it's it's needed. And I think games are a good way of doing it. Yeah. So the drawbacks then? Um, RSI. <clears throat> yes. I have had a few bad bouts of um, of Capital Tunnel. 
I've been trying to be very careful, but yeah, I've had a, a, I'm going to say RSI. It's not not carpal tunnel yet, but it may develop into it. Arthritis, things like that in your wrist as well. Um, yeah. Um, I, I've got a very specific lack one for of that. sleep. Well, the the um the RSI thing, I it's can't. A discipline thing, that isn't it? I can't I can't handwrite anymore. From oh, I can't fill out forms just... or anything like that. Um, it's not the actual handwriting that suffers. My hand burns and aches. The the muscles hurt because I've spent my entire adult life doing this. Are with you the doing mouse. that? Is that what you're doing? Is you do you write like that? Like no, hold, I, I, like hold I, your hand really close like together. That, but but it, it hurts there. I actually said intenses. today at, at work I wrote something down on a note. I was drawing some very quick diagrams on my notepad, and I said on oh, that sat and then so and I started doing some like doing some words. I started writing some words <laughs> down, and the, one were all in black I can capitals. do words, me. Two, I was getting E's before A's and D's instead of B's. I do that. And, oh my yeah. god, I'm not dyslexic, but Jesus Christ, what's wrong with me? And then I was just I just started scribbling. I didn't even know what I was writing by the end of it. I was like, <laughs> you're just writing like this. Jesus Christ. I, I, yeah, I mean, I suppose yeah, lack of lack of handwriting, but that's I think that's being a developer rather than uh, being a gamer. I think it's the, this 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 the, the mouse hand position has screwed up my hands, but yeah. So apart from physical things, then not um, just mental things, but are there any other detriment? I mean, to me, one of one of my I'm not going to say it. It hasn't affected uh, me or my relationships. As that I'm aware of, but I'm very also very aware that my wife doesn't get to see me as much as some other people's wives may. Why? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I just so accused my wife of wives. cheating. Is she watching? I'm just going to check the chat. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, no, you know what I mean. I, I don't. I'm, I'm conscious that I don't spend as much time as I probably should with her because I'm a gamer and because the time that I do have to game. I could, I could split it with her. You know, I, I do try and balance it, so it hasn't affected me there, but it may do when I can see how it would. You know, but you do play games with her as well, don't you? You do. We, we you, do try to play yeah. some games together, yeah. But that is, she's not a gamer. She, you know, she told me before we got married she was a big gamer, but since we got married, she's trying to impress you. Yeah, that's it. Don't blame her like. She, to be fair, she does get. I know. I don't. I, I don't blame her either. Look at, look at this. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> Um, she does. Um, she does get her Atari out quite a lot, and I go downstairs and she's. <laughs> Is that she's... what you call it? <laughs> Sorry. She gets, and I, I, all I can hear is this clicking coming from downstairs, and it's her on that bloody joystick thing that I was showing the other week. Um, we, had a, we had a question here. As a dev, do you ever write to people as you would write a code? I'm not entirely sure. I think you might. What where what what, ta- what potato power? That's is not, potato not power, from yeah. England, um, so right. that's obviously a a, a, a slight error in english but as a dev do you ever write to people as you would write a, as you would write code i assume that is um, um I, I, often, I often think in code yeah I, i'm constantly trying to copy and paste yeah. in my mind Chris only sees the metrics you know what i used to be a bit like that when i was just doing html and css stuff years ago i used to see if i wrote I, well I, I can do it these days but as i'm writing the css that is the HTML. I can actually see what the HTML is going to look like, but I'm sure losing the same boat by now with that kind of thing. But um, what was the question? That do was I, Do I write to people as I write? No, I do. I just said I do often, quite often, think in if blocks and switch statements, and I'm always trying to analyze everything in life because I'm a I'm an analyst as well. As part of my job as a technical architect is to be an analyst. It, you know, when I'm designing systems, it may not sound like I'm very competent at it, but I, my my brain is very, um, you know, detail and techni- technical, detailed and technical. So I tend to do a lot of thinking like that, and I always try and make everything into an object or a data model. Everything has got some kind of relation to each other, you know, and I have to try and think of it that way in order to make sense of it. Yeah, I think dragging this uh, kicking and screaming back into gaming as well. The same thing is true of gaming. I think when you get really into games, like when I was really into Quake 2, I would uh, look at objects in the real world and think I could double jump off that. I might be able to reach that. Um, you know, you, you do tend to apply some of the things that you've done in games. And I think that's because you there- play so much of them. I once played uh, Dungeon Keeper 2 uh, so long that I could hear the imps teleporting <laughs> everywhere I went. Like, I was, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> I remember you like, me about that. Freaking out. 
Yeah, I've got a bit quiet to stay. Hello? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um... I'm, I'm with you there because I've done the same. I can't think of the games, but I have had, I've played a few games where all I can think about is what's going on in the game. And, uh, you know, I might be playing a parkour game or something and wanting to parkour across a wall and swing and get into work or something. I don't know. The, the obvious <laughs> one, I, the obvious one, I think, uh, I, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I have played quite a lot of it. Uh, not anymore, but Candy Crush. Um, and when I close my eyes, you'd still see them. You'd be do, still doing the pattern matching with your eyes closed have you have you tried uh, have you guys played guitar hero i can't remember yeah. if you said you had or not yeah. yeah if you play that for long enough and then you look at a blank wall all you can see is really crazy psychedelic stuff because of the because the way that the screen comes down you know the, the way that the notes oh yeah yeah, yeah, so, yeah so it's just a, a eye thing but <clears throat> i had a weird thing with when you know when we were driving in arizona and i was just we were basically spending the entire time three hour journeys looking at the road You'd look up at the sky, and the sky would be twisting because of the road oh, yeah, yeah. motion. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. um, other drawbacks, um, like I said, lack of sleep. It's always one of these things where it's like, oh, just another half hour. Just hmm. another half hour. And obviously, this, it, it isn't all the time, but it does happen more often than it probably should do these days. I'm very, I I'm very disciplined in that respect, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm, well, I wish uh, I I've actually trained sometimes. myself to be able to sl survive on about four hours sleep a night. And I've been doing I that since do I was that. like 16. I can do that. And when we, when we went to Lands, I basically, because the experience was so novel and you had access to like, you know, high speed connections and stuff, mm. we would purposely stay awake for the entire, you yeah, know, hours. 50 hours straight if we, if we can. Um, just to make sure that we got everything in there because it, it happened like a couple of times a year. These that was days, just cool I mean, seeing everybody. Yeah, these days I, I I don't do that anymore. So I don't I don't suffer from lack of sleep from gaming. I don't think I ever have. Yeah, but you've got a very low tolerance anyway. When when you get tired, it destroys you. Yeah, yeah. You, you start going, <sighs> and you start like blinking oh, really yeah, funny. And yeah, you're in bed about ten minutes later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I get very dry eyes. One of the drawback uh, that we have mentioned previously, violence. Obviously everybody that plays computer games is violent. <laughs> and we haven't actually addressed it in any way, shape, or form. We've talked about because it. Because it's such a ridiculous statement. It is, it is and yeah. it's mainly it's mainly uh, it's like dot com, isn't it? You know, it's that kind of hundred percent of people that died of stab wounds were stabbed with a knife. So that must mean that everyone who wants a knife we we'll stab people because 100% of no. it's, um, it's, it's, it's hype like, it's hype yeah, hyperbole. it's like and it's like you know the shootings in the um, in Columbine <laughs> and things like that where they're looking oh these two uh, these two guys used to play computer games a lot Doom yeah I mentioned Doom for that yep. yeah yes because there were 17 and everyone who was 17 every <laughs> yeah. male who was 17 in that part of the world played computer games incessantly yeah, yeah well Doom I mean how many time, how many people have played Doom I think everyone's played Doom <laughs> so at least some of those people are going to kill people yeah, with guns, it's, it's, which you, it's, you can buy in Walmart in America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, again, it was a silly suggestion. It, 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 it's worth <laughs> talking about and mentioning because at the end of the day, it is a drawback that some people consider. Yeah. I was reading a study the other day that actually, uh, in Nature, I think it was, um, that uh, after 10 years worth of uh, data collection, Oxford University even now proved that up to a couple of hours... Uh, of gaming per day is actually good for the development of a child's mind. Um, I can send you the link. I, mean, I wouldn't send. I wouldn't give a child like would Silent do. Hill to play or something no, like that. Bus. You know. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have a problem with that, but I don't think I wouldn't want to endorse it for the same reason. I wouldn't want to say that it's um, it could, it causes problems. I think we've already talked about the benefits of it. It gives you better hand-eye coordination. It gives you better. It gives you experience in life and things that you might not otherwise experience. You might only be told about, like for instance, you know, the car thing. Um, but to say that it can actually improve someone's development, I think, is probably well. That's what doing the same thing in the other direction. Though. Well, maybe, no, yeah. But this is based on science. The other one just based on knee-jerk reaction and people. Yeah. Blaming something I don't understand, i.e., it. She's a witch. Burn her. Burn yeah. her. <laughs> no, it's the same with everything, though, isn't it? It's the same with guns. It's the same with drugs. It's the same with ev everything that 
is taboo essentially or, or is un- misunderstood games yeah. unfortunately came under that bracket quite a lot i think it's getting better it is, and it's because yeah. it was new. Anything mm. that's new was uh, is is it automatically singled out to be bad. And books, when books, yes. um, books were being blamed for like causing um, youths to, to to misbehave and stuff because they're reading things in books and then copying it. Music. And then when t then when TV came along or when yeah. radio came along and the same thing was applied to radio, then TV. Well, yeah, I then, think and then games. Haven't games been quite a, a long burner though? When you think about them. Their rise to commercial kind of not commercial. Their rise to popularity. Long burner. Do you know? Do you not think they've taken a long time? I mean, what to become this popular? Yeah, I think I, I think we think that because we've grown up with them. Okay, when maybe. did games become popular? You got to say what about the PSX era? That's when it kind of came into mainstream. No, no, well after that. No, I think again after the, gaming became cool. I summoned that yeah. everyone could do without fear of recommended when the PlayStation came, which was what, yeah. 94? 95, I got mine. So, 10 years? Ain't that long? That's 20 That's years. 20 years, mate. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that a few years. times. <laughs> That's Some 20 is... years since I got. Oh, God. That is. That, yeah. Some of the games that we've played are that old as well. <laughs> like, some of the games oh. we, used to, we used to play. But no, that's the thing. It's oh, oh, hang on. Someone's now saying films took fifty years, so maybe it isn't a long time. Then I mean, it's not. It's, we, we've grown up with it relatively it's, quick. Okay, most, I'm sorry. I apologise. Take that back. The, the the rise of games has happened over the course of our lifetimes. Pretty much. I mean, I, I was born in 1982 when um, home computers started to become popular, like microcomputers. So my entire lifetime has been the progression of games, which feels like a long time because it's my entire life. Yeah. But in no, terms I- of like books, movies, radio, and stuff. That's over a, a substantially longer period. But I mean, books have, I imagine have been quite steady though since they were invented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because a lot of people couldn't read initially. That'll, um, that'll be it. Though, the general it? populace yeah. weren't educated enough to read. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, as people became more, more books have started to proliferate more through society and then across the world. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Gamer. I, I've just thought of another drawback: the stigma that you get. They get. We've said I, it a few times. There's, there's, there's not so much of a stigma these days because everyone, you know, it's kind of niche and cool to be a gamer these days. Yeah. But when someone says, "Oh, I, I'm a gamer," then you tell them quite matter of factly that no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> then, then the stigma <laughs> sets in. Well, that's what I mean. That's that's <laughs> that's distinctly what I'm talking about. The, yeah. the people who call themselves gamers who play FIFA and Call of Duty on the PlayStation Three. Yeah. And then, or whatever for these days. Yeah. Anyway, no. Anyone who calls himself a gamer and then admits to being a massive Call of Duty fan needs to re- readdress what they consider to be a, a hardcore gamer because that's not it. I've got a, a friend uh, who's in, well, who's in my band for a while and he was very, very, very much into PC gaming, which was odd for me to find someone else who liked PC gaming. Yeah. He was into his technical hardware stuff, but he basically just played Modern Warfare. Uh, which sounds crazy. Well, he did play a few other ga- uh, games, but basically that's all he talked about. We used to have people like that back when we first started. Though. Remember how many people were that would only play Counter Strike? I was just going to say that. Yeah, Counter Strike. Yeah. That, and that's know. all they do. They just play Counter Strike. Like for a, an entire LAN, they'd play yeah. Counter Strike from the moment they got there till the moment they left. I... The same map, just two. Yeah. The, whole, the, so, the same map for the entire LAN. That t- that that takes all of the enjoyment and all of the benefits that I get from gaming out of it. If I was just playing one game, this is another reason I don't play MMOs anymore because I've, there's so many good games out there. The, the time I do have, I want to be playing something different. I want to be playing. I want to be looking at a new technology, technology, a new technique of doing something, or a new game mechanic that's interesting. You know, I don't <laughs> want to be. Mythalaw's asking if a hardcore gamer is a speedrunner. Nah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and no. also, I'd no, just like to address... I disagree. I disagree I entirely. Hardcore, <laughs> hardcore gaming, well, speedrunning is hardcore by its by default. It has to be. Mm. But hardcore gaming itself is a very different thing, I think. Yeah, you're not enjoying the game if you're speedrunning it. You're just trying to accomplish something. I think when you speedrun mm, right. the game, you've already enjoyed it, and now you're trying to get something else out of it. It's, a, it's a way of extending the game. If you played the game enough to be able to speedrun it, then you've obviously enjoyed it's, it <laughs> it's people chasing accolades of some description and um, everyone does it in some respects so it's you know it's it, it's admirable in my eyes i think chris is uh, 42 by the way zombie yeah but his beard is 58 
you, we're you, all early, 32, I think. And early, early 30s. Thanks, guys. How old are you guys? I'm 20, 29 Nov. What? But people In learn November. English. In November. I understood that. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's a zombie. He's got um, his, you know, he eats brains. Yeah. I am actually... I'm 33. You are 33, you, yeah. Just recently, 33. Just recently. I always you, think you, about that there. Are you still 32, Chris? I'm 42, apparently. No, I have been really. mistaken for a 48-year-old when I was 18. <laughs> It was a hard right. paper no, off, wasn't it? I, I was at a place called... Uh, I live in a, a town called Blackpool. Um, for those who don't know it... It's, it's a delightful, seas- doesn't it? It's, yeah, it's a, it's a t- seaside town that enjoyed a lot of... Um, a lot of visitors in the 1900s. And it was... Uh, it's basically <laughs> still in the 1900s. There's a there's a place up the up the road uh, I went when I first moved here called Copperface Jacks. And it's next to Norbrecht Castle. If anybody is aware of what Norbrecht Castle is, it's a massive hotel. Anyway... All the other stuff aside, um, I forgot what I was talking about. You're talking about how old you are. That was it. I was in Copperface Jacks. <laughs> this woman comes up to me, and she was horrible. Absolutely, like she was, she was ancient. She must have smoked about 900 fags a day, and she was just <laughs> disgusted. It was like, oh, and she comes up to me, and she and she was in her 40s, and I had a little goatee then. I was. 18 years old, so I did look fairly young, you know, but I always could get served for booze. And she thought I was 48. I was like, come on, love. Honestly, there's... there's... What, what, how was she smoking these cigarettes with her eyes? I have no idea, but she was just hon- horrible. Like, oh, enough. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I get ID'd if I shave this off, which is why I keep a bare minimum of uh. facial hair. I get ID'd, but only if I shave my beard off and I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> Which has happened. I've, I've never been ID'd in my life. I think it's the freckles. In fact, you know, I got ID'd uh, in Chicago Airport because in Chicago Airport, everybody... <laughs> because they were checking you for explosives. Everybody gets yeah. ID'd. There was, a, there was a guy with a Zimmer frame in front of me getting served and he got ID'd. And he, he, was, he was an old guy as well. He wasn't just a dude with a Zimmer frame. Craziness, hundred percent ID policies. Crazy. Don't see that in England. Fair enough. Because we're liberal. Yeah, we're not. So, any more drawbacks we can think of? I can't think of any drawbacks. I don't think it's negatively impacted my life at all. I think people probably. I think the stigma part of it. People assume that your life's bad because you you're into games. Same way people assume that people are into like. Um, you know, Dungeons and Dragons and and nerdy sort of like I'm yeah. talking real nerdy things, um, you know, w- Warhammer and things like that. I think people assume that those the people who are into that stuff are doing it because they've got no they've life, got nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah, and, the world, not that they want to do it. Yeah, and perhaps they do want to do it, but but there is, I don't I don't think I fit into that category. Well, as Chris mentioned. Years ago, being a gamer used to carry that stigma, and it was grouped in the same as you know the World of Warcraft, the Dungeons and Dragons. It was all all classed as geeks, mm. being the same thing. Now, being a geek's become popular and like fashionable. No, it's kind of like no, it hasn't. Oh, it has. Yes, wearing it has. a geek T-shirt has become popular. No, yes. Sorry, sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah. Uh, people now class themselves as as being a geek for the most trivial things because. The title geek has become popular. So people say, "Oh, I'm I'm such a geek. I watched three episodes of Coronation Street last week." You're like, "No, fuck off." So someone on Facebook recently said, and I'm I'm going to paraphrase this: uh, "Oh, it's windy outside, and I can get my washing on the line. I'm such a geek." Yeah, and uh, it's horrible. It's I'm horrible. Holding and back with this each one time go someone on says something, that a little part of me dies inside. And one day, it's just going to get to the point where uh, this whole games and violence thing might actually come to fruition because I might just rip someone's head off. Yeah. If would you do it in a game type, type way? Would you, would you, like, would you, would you keep no, a it, it, berserk pack and splatter them? <laughs> I wouldn't actually do that, obviously, but I have went on rants before to people who have called themselves, you know, these yeah, type of things. Yeah, I think all three of us and have. It, it, it kind of takes away because... Let's not beat around the bush. As children... We did suffer because of this. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it, if, if we'd have played football, 
or in summit, then it would, it'd have been fine, and you know, you'd been one of the guys. And no, because you were different, you know, you're isolated, you were picked on. We've suffered. We paid our penance, and now for all of a sudden, <laughs> people are coming and jump on the bandwagon and go, "Oh yeah, I'm a geek as well." And you're like, "No, fuck off." You're not. You get back on your your whatever is fashionable. That's what you do. Bandwagon. Sorry, completely, I started. No, again. completely agree. And I, I, <laughs> I saw you both staring at me there. No, I I to no that I'm bit. just, I just don't want to join in because I can, I, yeah, I can't probably hate this. them more than you. <laughs> yeah, so that's us. As, as I'm getting older, I'm getting less tolerance for everybody and everything, though. So, so you're going to be a proper old bastard, oh, aren't I you? I am going to be a proper. You were like old Clint bastard. Eastwood in uh, Gran Torino. You don't want to live next to me when when I'm old. Honestly, I, don't. <laughs> I do. I'm gonna drill a glory hole in your bathroom. That's fine. You do that, and in the ceiling, you'll get yeah. you'll get a dick in your ear whenever you're on the toilet. Ooh, is that promise? <laughs> I could rest the uh, the toilet roll on it. You could. You could. <laughs> I like how I like how you gave it two hands. Then that was the. Uh, so the kitchen roll. <laughs> Ready the as well. Carpet tube. <laughs> Oh, all right, oh, let's move on to another again. one then. Another thing we've we've talked about lots of uh, <clears throat> benefits and lots of the other thing um, uh, drawbacks. So we've already talked, we've already asked this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, how much time do we devote to games, or we would like, uh, we would like to? So I think because I've replaced a lot of my gaming time with talking about game time, like mm. they're doing this. We do this three times a week. Um, I do this although, because of the way that I play games, basically. Yeah. I want to talk to people about them, but I can't. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I quit my job a while back and spent a year, well, about nine months, um, trying to develop my indie game. And in the middle of that, doing a lot of research. <laughs> um, and I found that I didn't want to play games all the time. I had all that extra time to do things, and I didn't spend it playing games. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I currently get about as much time as I need to play games. Maybe no, no. I think I think I've, I get a, I just just because I want to play on the, my Rift a lot more now because I've got yeah. a new toy. But otherwise, I think I get I think I get plenty of time to play games. How um, if if yeah, I put a number on it. What would you say? I've got a figure in my head now, and I'm trying to work out that if, if it actually is feasible. A number for what though? What's the number for? Uh, well, I, I spend playing games a week. The amount of what? I, sorry. Hours, hours I spent hours. playing games a week. I right. remember fill, I remember <clears> filling <throat> out form, um, like a questionnaire, and I remember filling out the um, fifty hours plus bracket. It used to be like yeah, that. Yeah, certainly used to used be. To and be. I don't do that now, but uh, yeah, at one point I was playing easily fifty hours plus a week. I think I think mine is between zero, obviously, but I think it averages maybe about two to three hours a week these days. Oh. Because I don't get much time when I'm up here on my computer. I'm doing things for Resonance Arcade. I'm filling a document in. I'm formatting computers or sorting things out. I'm doing something, or I'm developing. Mm. I'd say for me, it's ten, fifteen hours a week. Yeah, I'd probably say about the same. I always try and devote at least one kind of evening, like an entire, you know, from. I either finish doing what I'm doing on a Saturday or when I get in from work on a Friday and then try and just like devote that just to games. That's my night off. That's my kind of night for me to do what I want to do. And then, you know, other days I'll have to do bollocks. So what about you guys in the uh, chat then? How how much do you spend playing games roughly a week? How many hours? Because, um, I mean, mine varies. I mean, as I said, some night, some weekends I'll just go not getting dressed, not leaving the house, just wearing my dressing gown and just watching Jeremy Kyle. Dis- just being disgusting. <laughs> Not even wasting time having a shower. Just come in here in the morning, sit down. When the wife wakes up, give her a kiss, play games for the rest That's of the That's going to be lovely, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Horrible, sweaty dressing being gown. Full man. Of sin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's exactly what I do. I, I make sure that I've thrown up on myself before I play games. <laughs> it just happens naturally, isn't it? You... <laughs> I think you can get away with it for a weekend. You know, it's not like I do that every day. You... It's nice to kind of slob out every now and again and just <clears throat> surround yourself with munchies and just spaz out on a game. Yeah. 
Well, Zombies just said about four hours a day, which is admirable. I'd love to be able to yeah, play that much. I'd, um, I'd like that. If I think if I if I wasn't constantly trying to uh, learn and constantly trying to do something for a living that I thoroughly enjoy, i.e. at the moment I'm trying desperately to be a game developer. Previous to that, I was trying desperately to be a musician or producer or something that was creative in general. Um, and before that, I've done many things and I've never really settled anywhere. I really always loved games and I've always wanted to be a game dev, so that's what I'm pushing. But if I didn't have to do that, I would just play games. Uh, Mythalaws said 8 to 10 hours a week uh, and Slate is asking how long the stream goes on for <laughs> uh, about streams, two hours normally the streams are around about two hours yeah so we've got another yeah. half an hour left um, we're, we're, we, we, we didn't actually think we'd be able to talk for too long on this one but we're doing alright I think mm -hmm. um, I, so in answer to the question I think for me I don't think I get enough time playing games these days I wish I would I wish I had I wish I had a lot more did everyone else answer? Uh, uh, pretty, yeah. I said about ten fifteen, and Lou kind of agreed. Yeah, I'd say about the same. Fair enough. So I, um, I, I do consciously make time. If I don't do that, then I don't end up with time. Mm. So, like, I, I suppose I've, I'm a different boat from you, but because I'm employed. Not say Chris isn't employed, but um, yeah. he's self-employed. Um, the kind of I devote a lot of my time when I'm at work, and even time when I'm out of work, to work. But ultimately, I still get paid a salary regardless of what happens. So if I've decided enough is enough, then I can just like detach from that and then start doing what I want to do instead of what I need to do or what I should be doing necessarily. Mm. Yeah. I think you're in a, kind of in a different boat. Yeah, I'm, 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 I, well, I used to work in PR, and PR is a, a notoriously high-stress uh, time suck, basically. Um, and now that I work in a, di a different um, field, I basically I work from nine till five, and I don't think about work outside of work hours. I don't have to. No one does there. It's very relaxed, and that's afforded me a lot more time to play games and get back into it. Because there was a point where I pretty much not played any games. It was like a dark, dark period when I'd not played anything for about three years. I, I had I had one of those as well. Um, I had one. I think we all did. When we, we've all kind of disappeared. We all sit in an IRC channel, or we used to until it died recently. Um, but we've, we've, I, you'd, if you'd spend any time in there, you'd notice that people would disappear, get a girlfriend, or get a new job or something, and disappear um, out of the IRC women channel. Women were scared, you SQS. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> for every me, it was, uh, it was when I bought my house. I yeah. kind of, there was that much else going on. I, I didn't even get a broadband. You didn't have internet for, for about. You, know, you didn't have internet for about a year, did you? No, it was about six months. It was a long time. It was. I remember you saying to me, was a long time." I, I remember you saying to me, "Right, when I get back on the internet, I want to do everything. I want to be on everything." Yeah, that was that was a dark period. <laughs> I've never not had the internet. Not until not be, as soon as I figured out what the internet was, or dialing up to a BBS or whatever, I've or been online since, pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, I um, I don't know. I I kind of. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm still trying to think of, uh, of of downsides to being a gamer, but I know we've mo we've moved past that now. If, I think if there was <clears> if there was too many downsides, we wouldn't be gamers. I think even if there were downsides, they wouldn't apply that we, to us. That we'd admit to. We'd we'd be able to defend the reasons why. Otherwise, it would I be don't different. think there's any downsides over and above the downsides that you get from it. Like if you say RSI, if your hobby was running, you know, very outdoors, very healthy. By the time you're in your forties, you know, with knackered knees, mm. and not being able to walk up the stairs properly, and things like yeah. that. So, all these things that you do do have a detrimental effect on your body. Uh, for providing that you keep yourself relatively healthy, I don't see really any health reasons why being an avid gamer should be that much. If you've got the correct posture and you know you're you're taking regular breaks, an RSI shouldn't really set in no, unless I'm, you're prone to it anyway. I've actually got it down over the last few years I don't seem to have it it doesn't seem to affect me occasionally I'll get a real twinge like my elbow or something but you know it's time to give it a break yeah um, but I do have I mean sessions on the computer can be hours and hours and hours and hours you know I'll be at work all day and then I'll come home and work into the night one thing I've noticed is um, all three of us have been 
basically staring at screens of some type since we were four year old, five year old. Mm -hmm. um, none of us need glasses. Nope. There is no. no correlation whatsoever between screens and uh, no. damaged eyes. No, but With I me. imagine a, a misconfigured screen doesn't help. The, the only thing is, is you can get something called CVS, computer vision syndrome, which can be exacerbated by flickering screens. Or flickering lights <laughs> in general. If you've got, I've, had, uh, I've talked to you guys before about the small vision that I get. And you, and I think everybody I've sp spoke to about it goes, what? Small vision? Yeah, right. If I'm really tired, it seems to be when I'm tired, but it also applies when I'm, I don't know, I'm trying to think, when I'm concentrating a lot on, a com on the computer or I'm staring at a particular part of the screen. It doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it's like everything, it's like I get fisheye view. Everything goes... Really, really small, and it's like I can't reach it. It's, I can't. Have you changed your FOV? <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like that kind of thing. It feels it's really weird. It's tunnel vision. That's what happens to people before the faint. That's but when I, you. Yeah. I've had that L since I was a oxygen. child. I've had that since I was very young, though. You, you You're might holding some... your breath. No. You, you might have some kind of borderline fainting issue that you doesn't quite uh, transpire into fainting. I have fainted um, once in my I've, life. I've known, I've known people, it seems to happen to girls a lot, actually, uh, not just the kind of swooning because of seeing me thing, but the, the, um, I've known girls who've just like, had kind of narcolepsy almost, where they've just passed out, that have like random tunnel vision. I think it's like migraine related. Do you get migraines, don't you, Chris? Uh, not now. I used to when I was younger. And yes, sometimes, to. because I'm tired, I'll get a, a, a headache, but I don't get migraines these days. I once went entirely blind for... Uh, Blind from eating a box of still sugar puffs on a migraine. You said that. <laughs> I love Who that was... story. Yeah, I didn't love it at the time. I thought, oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but I, I, I found that quite surprising because I, I was always told as a child, oh, don't sit so close to that or don't play that so much. You, you'll end up, you know, blind or needing glasses. And now that I'm bald and I, I kind of need a feature, so some glasses would actually, I think, kind of, <laughs> suit me quite well but I'm not a type of ponty bastard to wear glasses that don't have lenses in them um, <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> yeah it's like I almost want <laughs> to become a little bit nearsighted or something I really don't ho I hope I don't I'll be honest because no, I, I, love I, my I, I am joking um, I've spent I've spent so long not having to worry about glasses. I don't think I want that responsibility. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually cause I'm I'm in a kind of at risk boat because I've got diabetes. Right. So eye problems are something which are inherent with that. Although luckily there seems to have been recently a big breakthrough in that, so fingers cool. crossed, uh, something might be able to do something about that. But yeah, I might be able to get a set of like bifocal Oculus Rift. You can wear glasses with your Rift. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I've not had any negative um, health um, experiences apart from the, um, the the hands handwriting thing. But I was never very good at handwriting anyway, so I don't care. You've always wrote like you had like. Sticks crafted. Epileptic them. spiders, it's been described as. Well, I'm going to let us keep talking for a little bit, but um, if anyone in the chat has any questions, uh, please do ask now because we're going to close the show down shortly. Um, we said anything again, game related or anything, just to, or, or, or anyone, anything directed at individuals in the uh, in the chat, just gives a shout. But yeah, so what, we've got one other thing on the list we were talking about. Uh, games affecting modern culture. Again, we have kind of covered it a little bit. I feel like that's an episode in itself. It, it's there's a lot. Because then we can really go into the stuff about the the violence and the, you know that yeah. we they cover in the first episode stuff like the um you know the the the, the rape fantasy games in Japan and how they've got the lowest instance of uh, rape. Hot, hot full boyfriend. Have you seen that one? Yeah, uh, oh. yeah, it's a pigeon one, isn't it? Yeah, you're a basically yeah. your boyfriend is a pigeon, and you you have to keep him or something. You have to keep him as a boyfriend. I, I don't surprise care. me. It's crazy I, I Japanese have, stuff. I have played Japanese um, dating simulators and girlfriend simulators before. So have I, yeah, yeah. They're bizarre. Um, yeah. Slit is asking if he can tell us what he's doing. <laughs> I'm a little bit. Is, is that a loaded question? Can I let the guys know what I'm currently doing? Oh right, um, <laughs> Slit is a, a indie dev community kind of guy. He oh, runs. Right. Um, he runs the hashtag indie dev hour. Um, Indie Dev Hour on Wednesdays at 7.30 to 8.30, I believe. Um, it's a hashtag that people use to kind of just show off the projects and stuff, and it's a really successful initiative. Um, but yes, feel free, Slayer, 
please uh, do do write in the chat. So I that might even read it out if you, if I feel comfortable. That runs at the same time as our show, then, doesn't it? It does, mm. and I do use it as a hashtag to put into the show. But even right. though this isn't about indie dev specifically, we are still there. Is at least two indie devs in this group, so I think it's uh, warranted. At least, <laughs> yeah. Steam may or may not be an indie dev. <laughs> I think you just don't know at this time. Did I say may or may not? Sorry. He said there's at least two in this, and yeah. there's only three of us <laughs> here. Three of us. <laughs> I meant on the show in general. I mean, like, you know, there's two of us. and Because Sam's a secret programmer as well. He does it in handwritten assembly. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Slit has got a YouTube channel as well. Yes. So do we. He games on. Yes. So do we. We have a YouTube channel. We also have a Twitch channel. Hello. <laughs> and uh, which, sure. is, which will look a bit out of place on YouTube. So we have a YouTube channel. Hi, YouTube. Hi. Uh, we've got a Facebook page, which um, I think Lou is in charge of. I am. I'm, I do a bit on it, but not much. Um, uh, forward slash Residence Arcade on Facebook. Uh, we've got a Twitter page, which is where I kind of keep things up to date. But again, not getting much time to do it at the moment. I'm just spamming when we've uh, when we've got a show coming up. Uh, and that's on forward slash Residence Arcade on Twitter. Our MySpace page... MySpace? MySpace. <laughs> Don't have a MySpace page. Oh, well, ICQ contact information. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 2829 2632. Two, one, two to one, four, one, four, three. Fucking camera. Uh, an old man ended in 1783. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, well, why do have any of us attended a game jam? I have. I, I have recently not. attended Lou Specky has. Jam. Um, so I made a game for a Specky Jam, which was a make a game which looked like it should be on a Sinclair Spectrum. Has the winner been with, announced yet? No, the, the, the guy's procrastinating. Um, I don't think there is going to be a winner. I think there's just going to be the games on the site. Fair enough. But uh, I had a good go at it, and I enjoyed it. Um, I would like to do more game jams. It what might be nice, actually, if we do an episode on indie games during the next Ludum Dare. That'd be quite a cool thing to yeah, do, maybe. Yeah, up for that. Um, I, I, I've, uh, I'm not done a game jam yet only because of time again all time constraints um i was intending to do one with mmo buff but i'll be honest i don't know what's going on with that at the moment uh for, for uh, well, just so happens that so. slate is organizing a charity one. Ooh, well again we'll see give us a ch give us a shout on twitter or something i'll uh, see if it's interesting Re resonance us. arcade entry to a game jam would be an interesting one wouldn't it i would be very interested in doing anything with you lou and i'm not just restricting that to development cool <laughs> <laughs> no on see me after the show um i see you after the show every <laughs> week mate and i see you when you're in your bed and yeah anyway um the, yeah i'm i'm up for game jams but again yeah i have to pre pre book them and get on with them but i'm up for, i'm up for you, me and you entering anything Lou, up for anything like that i think the whole all four of us like oh fuck those two Steve, steve's had some great ideas for games that's yeah, not got around yeah. to doing it's not you just ideas beating. though you have to be able to do something you can't enter a game jam with an idea no but if you if you have an idea and someone can program yes then you've but, got the makings game, of quite a good thing. Game jams aren't about ideas. The yes, game jams, are. you get given an idea. Yeah, but it's you how you interpret that idea. I, I understand that, but again, it, it's okay, but I, I'm a firm believer that people who in, get involved in game jams must have some kind of practical skill to to apply to it. Otherwise, you're just the ideas, man. And all of us have got yeah. ideas. You know, it's not And really ideas has, has, has got the world nowhere, hasn't it? <laughs> I think you'll find Sid, that a lot, a lot Mia. of game jams have a, a specific rule that says you cannot join unless you are participating in in I the production think. of the. I will press every thirty seventh spacebar. Sid Mia somewhere just shed a tear from hearing the fact. And Warren Spector, Warren Spector is somewhere crying right now because games like Deus Ex and Thief that he's been directly responsible for, and he doesn't do any programming. So fuck you. Hey, hey, I'm just telling you what the rules are on some other game jams. I, I, I happen to agree with it because I think people, you know, I can come up with ideas. You can come up with ideas, Luce. Everyone can come up with ideas. It's it's about being able to help towards the product instead of just standing around going, huh? I'm not saying Steel do that. <laughs> or or well, Sam, in fact. My coding abilities are very limited. 
<laughs> but your but your understanding of games is really good. And there's a difference between people with ideas like, oh, I've got a great idea for a game, and it's a shit idea, or it's it's an unpracticable idea. But people who understand games, I think you've come up with some really good ideas, Steve. So I think if there's certain people who are just good at designing games. Here we go. This is from some indie developers. Ideas people are dead weight in game jams. They in game jams. the right ideas people. Yeah, no, I'm not. I look, agree. I'm not saying that ideas are worthless, <laughs> and I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a. I'm not meaning it because of you in particular, Steve. I think you've come up with some great ideas. I've talked to you about games in the past, and I think you, you know, you've got great concepts. But when it comes to a game jam, you've got 48 hours, and someone who just comes in and goes, right, okay, so the the, the subject is over the top, or whatever. That's the subject that you get given. And then them just helping with the brainstorming, and then occasionally shouting over someone's someone's shoulder. I, it, I know what it, you mean, but it's, it's not. The... It's it's not. Yeah, part I, of I the don't see it as it. being an episode of The Apprentice where everyone's shouting. Oh, I think we should do this, and I think we should do that. No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't expect you to be like that. But I'm saying generally the rule is I, you can't. I, I do use that voice, ideas, man. Do you? Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so yes, we'll. Um, Anywho, we we shall we shall have a think about that later, and I'll. Uh, I'll read all your comments afterwards. I, t- I haven't read everything so far, but um, I think we'll call that a night then, eh? I think, yeah. I mean, let's just check the documents. Yeah, I don't think we should uh, really cover the last question as I don't think it's it's relevant to the uh, uh, discussion at hand. So I don't, I don't actually know the answer. <laughs> no, neither do I. I certainly don't know the answer. What? What? How, get, how, what? And I'm more likely to know the answer because I often know that type of. Thing. <laughs> What well, was Chris, sorry? What was the question? Um, I'm not reading this. out. <laughs> oh, the one that I wrote. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. I'm not reading that out either. But I was hoping someone may accidentally read it. <laughs> Just <laughs> not, not <laughs> pre-reading read the score. How many? <laughs> yes. Um, answers. Answers on a postcard as to what you think it might be. Yes. Yeah. If, the if winner will get the respect. question. <laughs> the, the winner gets Chris's bead and lose Oculus Rift. Fuck off. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. I can grow my <laughs> Oculus in panic mode. I can grow my Oculus beard back. He can't grow his Oculus Rift <laughs> the back. Oculus beard. <laughs> <laughs> right. On that note, we shall say good night. Um, thank you very much for watching. You've been a gr- brilliant audience today. We've had a lot of participation. Yeah. We need to come help along, this episode as come well. Come along next week. Unfortunately, we are pre-recording most of our game streams at the moment uh, because we just we're just having so many technical issues with it. It's not worth stressing over. Um, so. <clears throat> Check us out next Wednesday. We don't know what the subject is yet. We shall talk about that just after the show. And on Friday, uh, Steve, no, Lou and I are playing Gears of War 2 uh, at 7.30 on Friday night. So don't go to the pub and watch us pre-recorded playing a game that's about 10, ten years old. <laughs> Steady on. <clears throat> um, and better than you. At it. So we'll catch you later. See you later, guys. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye.